Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to a new and exciting video. This one, I really cannot wait to share with you. But at this point, I want to say thank you for all the great comments I got from you on YouTube and Instagram and on Facebook. Making these videos is a lot of work and I really appreciate that you like them so much. If you're new to this channel, I'm your host MDT and I'm posting new videos all around Mastering Dental Technology every Friday. So make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get updated on the latest content. In my last video, layering on Ciconia on Emacs Denton Cutback, the difficulty level was, I would say, medium to advanced. I get it. The amount of porcelain that was used and the complexity can be really intimidating for some technicians, especially the ones that are new to layering. The learning curve is rather steep because not only you have to be able to control the porcelain, you also have to understand tooth morphology and you have to know where to put certain translucencies. So in today's video, we're going to simplify it a little bit. We're going to layer on a facial cutback and I will show you in a later video how I'm using the three shape libraries and how I design those cases. Layering on a facial cutback has two major advantages. The first one is obvious. You only have to lay on the facial and you don't have to extend the incisal edge over a core. The second one is not as obvious as first because when you think about it, the outer tooth shape is already predefined by the library. So all you have to do is complete the facial with some porcelain. And like I said, you can decide how complex you want to layer it. Some people, they just mix power incisal and neutral 50-50 together and overlay the whole facial after they made a wash bake. And there's nothing wrong with it. If you're in a rush or you have to get this case out, then you can do this, make a nice wash bake, and I will show you in the video how to do this. But today I'm going to show you a little bit more of a complex layering for the facial cutback. And you can decide later if that works for you. After all, this channel is called Mastering Dental Technology and not slapping on some porcelain. So, but enough talking, let's get started. So, welcome back to the video. On the left side, we have the facial cut bag we are layering today. And on the right side, the dentin cut bag we layered last week. I polished the crowns already using the Oscar polishing paste from Aesthetic Press and a soft Robinson brush. The wash bake is really simple as well. After sand blasting the unit, I'm applying a really thin layer of Ivocolor Glaze Flu on the facial. So between the mamelongs, you can either apply a complex gray, which you can mix out of the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, to even parts, or you use Ivocolor Essence E17, which is called Anthracite. I'm highlighting the mamelongs here with the crack liner stain, which is from the inline kit, but I'm not 100% sure if this is still available. So I will show you something else that I'm using these days for a wash bag. If you use me already for your full contour crowns, this might be another option for you you can try. Mio is a liquid ceramic and it's not a stain. So if you're just using the method where you mix power incisal and neutral 50-50 and overlay the facial, that looks really, really nice. If you say now, wait a second, why not using Maya directly on a full contour crown without layering? You are absolutely correct. But for those who want to micro layer, I will show you other options you can apply as well to get an aesthetic result like this one. By the way, one side was layered and the other side is full contour using Mio. First, I'm applying Mamelong Porcelain on the facial cutback. And because the design already predefines the position of the mamelongs, all you need to do is to apply the porcelain in the correct area. It's like coloring by numbers. And I'm using mamelong light and mamelong salmon in this case here because I'm going for an A2 shade. If you have a lighter shade, for example BL2, I would not use salmon. And if you have A4, I would stay away from light because the effect is way too intense. In micro layering, we are only applying very little amounts of porcelain. So even though it looks a lot here in the video, the portions I'm putting on there are really little. Adding the mamelongs and translucency, it's all about creating highlight and contrast. In micro layering, we are applying only a little amount of mamelong porcelain because remember, mamelong porcelain is the most opaquest porcelain in your assortment. 
I'm personally mixing Mamelon porcelains with staining liquid. And I'm doing this because it makes them more stable and they stay in place when I'm applying a next layer over those Mamelons. Then I'm filling the areas between the Mamelons with special incisal grey from the impulse kit. This will help to define the translucent level at the incisal and also creates a great contrast to the Mamelons next to it. If you already used a good amount of grey or Mio in the wash bake, you can also substitute the special incisal grey with OE1 if you don't go for this intense incisal translucent look. What also looks really nice is if you apply a transparent blue like tea blue on the median distal to create this internal translucency that you can see on natural teas. I'm usually applying a little bit more on the distal because natural teas they have a little bit more of a translucent level on the distal. Next I will apply an alternate layering pattern of power incisal 1 and power incisal 2 over the mammalongs and I'm extending this layer 1mm over the incisal edge. I'm doing this because when the porcelain shrinks in the oven, it will be at the exact level of the core. With a facial cut bake, we are avoiding that the porcelain on the final crown extends over the incisal border of the core. And the reason for this is one, you will see the edge of the core through the microlayered porcelain. And two, you want to keep the strength of the lingual core and only add the beauty on the visible facial. I'm applying power incisal in the upper incisal third only and make sure not to bulk it out too much facially. So my recommendation is to fire the units now in a first dentin bake. In this way you have more control over the outcome. You can also continue with the second step and fire everything in one bake. And once you practice this method a little bit, you could layer everything in one session. To add a little bit more chroma and to complete the shape at the gingival, I like to use cervical translucency yellow in this case here. And what it does, it will give the crown this peachy looking appearance and it will blend really nicely with the gingival once the crown is seated. You can also use OE5, which is a secondary dentin. To create the nice wide opalescent line angle teeth have, I'm using OE4. I'm explaining the difference of the OE porcelains in the dentin cutback video and I will leave a link in the description so you can watch it to get updated. I'm using my brush to shape the outer contour of the teeth and usually I'm not continuing with the layering until the shape is correct in width and height and all the dimensions like golden proportions are applied. Also keep in mind which tooth shape you're trying to achieve. If you're going for an oval tooth, don't make it flat and straight like a straight tooth. I will get more into detail into tooth shapes in the contouring videos. Then I'm filling up the remaining part with translucent incisal and neutral. So when you have a scenario like this here where you have a dentin cutback and a facial cutback next to each other, you can achieve the same value and same translucency level very easily. So I hope you liked this video and you give it a thumbs up. If anything was unclear or you have some question, leave a note in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you get updated on the latest content. Stay tuned.